But what's the problem? Is that in that state, what do we do? We then do this rather curious thing. Once we make that judgment, that if we think a particular pleasure is where we are most fully ourselves, then we're compelled, as he puts it, we're compelled to adopt those habits and that mode of life where we can experience that. That's the problem. That's all. There's really nothing wrong with that mode of life in itself. It doesn't make any difference. So that's what you do. But what? It'll keep you from going to a much more lofty and profound goal. That's the problem. It deprives you from a more noble and divine insight into the nature of reality. So here, all of these rivers pushing back and forth, they pick up the nature of the earth which they flow. When we identify with these things, either positively or negatively, we pick up the lifestyles and the mode of life that will produce those kinds of things. Very similar. So let me get to the next, next very, very interesting part. Um, Okay. I'm going to um, tell you first what I th think we may be able to conclude. Here we have a picture that Plato identifies as the real earth. See the real earth. You either go into its interior and experience all these things, or you live on the earth itself, right? in the real earth on the surface as it were. And that real earth on the surface, of course, is experiencing reality. Right? Or you descend in one of these regions and then finally find your way to the Atrusian Lake and then are reborn. But what is this like if we could read it? All these forces and all of these things going on and on. He describes it like a serpent, great power. Now, is it possible that when we read this, it may be, again, very similar to what may be described as Kundalini Yoga. For Kundalini Yoga, I'm sure as all of you know, works on the belief that there is a spinal column that runs through, therefore you have to keep the spine erect when you're meditating, and on each side, each side, there are two streams, the Ida and the Pingala, as it's called. And the whole goal of Kundalini Yoga is to wake up the source of the energy at the base of the spine and allow it to course its way all the way up until it showers into the Shashuma or the top of the head. That's called enlightenment, Kundalini Yoga. However, as it courses its way through here, you go through all kinds of different states of mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's right. Six centers and then the top Shishishuma. Now, the description of that hollow of the two rivers or the two streams which course their way up the spine and since it does that it leaves a trace as if it were like a serpent going across the sands that's where they call it, has vast power. 
Is it possible when we read this, since this is the journey of the soul, this is the journey of the soul, after all, occurred, this is the journey of the soul, up through these, through all these different lakes to be reincarnated until you finally reach the point when you can live on the surface of the earth, the real earth, the real heaven, the real light, and experience the nature of the divine. That's a journey of consciousness going through all of those stages, all those lakes. Could it be possible that we can line them up in such a way that it might be similar to the Kundalini Yoga? Is it possible? If so, we have an interesting parallel. So let me read you it. Maybe I should skip a little bit. I mean, it's a long paragraph, but let me read it. <clears throat> Such then is the nature of the earth as a whole and of the things around it. But around about the whole earth in the hollows of it are many regions, some deeper and wider than that in which we live, some deeper but with a narrower opening than ours, some also less in depth and wider. Now all these are connected with one another by many subterranean passage channels, some larger, some smaller, which are bored in all of them. And there are passages through which water flows from one to the other, as into mixing bowls. And there are everlasting rivers of huge size under the earth, flowing with hot and cold water. There's much fire, rivers of fire, and many streams of mud, some thinner, some thicker, like the rivers of mud that flow before the lava in Sicily. And then the lava itself. These fill the various regions as they happen to flow to one or another at any time. Now there's a kind of oscillation within the earth, moves all these up and down. The nature of the oscillation up and down is as follows. One of the chasms of the earth is greater than the rest. It's bored right through the whole earth. And many of the poets call this Tartarus the whole thing. For all the rivers flow together into this chasm and flow out again. They have each the nature of the earth through which they flow. And the reason why all the streams flow in and out is that this liquid matter has no bottom or foundation, so it oscillates and waves up and down. And the air and the wind about it do the same. Or they follow the liquid both when it moves towards the other side of the earth and when it moves towards this side. Just as breath of those who breathe blows in and out, so the wind there oscillates with the liquid and causes terrible and irresistible blast as it rushes in and out. Now, in yoga, there is what's called bashtika, which is a breathing exercise where there's violent breath pouring in and out, and it looks very much like this. And when the water retires to the region which we call the lower, it flows into the rivers there and fills them up, pumps them into the